afternoon. Good to see everyone. Uh, before I get into this kind of a recap of the Southern Illinois game, just to uh, take an opportunity to make a comment about uh, Tom and Dawn Blattner and their generous gift they gave to the indoor facility. Uh, you know, just one of what my grandpa used to call red letter days. Uh, so that was one of those last week, one of those unique days, uh, significant days that we have here in the athletic department, uh, especially to be able to complete that. Uh, what's going to be a tremendous facility, but to be able to lean on them and for them to help us uh, complete that is going to be a difference maker. Uh, I thought our kids played really well uh, on, on Saturday and uh, was really excited about the overall energy, uh, the tempo that we started with. Uh, after the fact, after the game, had a chance to go back, of course, watch the film. 37 minutes time of possession offensively. We were 9 of 13 on third down versus we held our opponent to 2 of 13. Uh, red zone scores, I think we were 5 of 6. They were 0 of 1. Uh, I thought our young kids at the end of the game did a tremendous job of continuing to compete, making sure that they kept them out of the end zone. 6.3 yards per rush versus 2.3. Um, I know for some people that doesn't uh, equate to sexy football, um, but here at NDSU it equates to winning football, uh, and that's the number one priority. And then, of course, I was really f excited with our – to only two penalties versus a game that we knew was, was going to be physical, was going to be a lot of energy to it. Um, one of those penalties uh, I'm probably still going to continue to argue with. But uh, overall, I think it was a, a good day. I thought our kids, we, we talked about it all week. Don't give Southern Illinois any free plays. And meaning, no, let's not create issues for ourselves being first and 15 or first and five. No free plays, make them earn everything. So really excited about how we played and, and uh, relatively healthy. And I know that's something uh, Noah Gindorf banged up, uh, lower, lower body extremity. Don't anticipate him playing this week. Um, Going to actually have to have surgery on Wednesday. So that's where that injury is at right now. Um, don't know if he'll be able to play for us again this year. Um, but I don't think he's done playing. Uh, East Tennessee State, uh, just a couple things real quick. You know, very balanced football team. Really good on offense, really good on defense. Uh, you know, have two running backs that have over 1,000 yards. Um, is it Quan Holmes? Oh, is that, did I say that correctly? Okay, I don't have it right. Well, I guess I do have one up here. Uh, Quay Holmes, excuse me. Really good tailback. 1,500 yards right now. Big physical kid, downhill. Um, Unique offense that we, we get to defend because they're under center. Uh, we seldom get to see that. Uh, you know, I, th I think it'll be a huge challenge for Code Green and the defense uh, just with the caliber of offense that's coming in here. Defensively, flying around the place, uh, they, they, they do a really good job of uh, taking away the run game, creating takeaways. They're plus one. I want to say they're in the top ten defensively uh, in turnover margin. So that tells me uh, they're playing complementary football as just like we try to emphasize here, but uh, uh, look forward to it. It's going it's to be a fun one. It's a good week. Uh, anytime you're playing football in December, uh, it's a positive. A meaningful football uh, is a positive. And uh, with that, I'll open it up for questions. First game in a long time against a non-Missouri Valley football conference team. Um, it's what the playoffs are all about, seeing some different competition and, and flexing against somebody else. So what sort of challenges, opportunities does this provide? And do you guys look forward to and getting to see somebody else? Well, the, you know, the biggest challenge, of course, Beth, is you just have never seen this team before. Uh, you know, that's what makes conference football a little bit unique is because you see them every year uh, unless they have a coaching change. Uh, you know, you, you feel like you kind of have the philosophy or the, the general concept of what they're trying to accomplish. So there'll be some I – mean, we're going to try to go through as much game film as we can. Uh, I know offensively they've gone even back to 2019 film just to make sure that – they see what they need to see and how East Tennessee State is going to defend some, some personnel and some formations that maybe they're not accustomed to seeing in the, in the SOCON right now. But uh, I think the, the easy part is getting our kids fired up because it is a, 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 a team we haven't played. Um, and it's the quarterfinals. Uh, it, it's still the, it's one, it's one week season right now. Uh, our kids understand that. Our, our seniors in particular uh, – want to continue to, to play together. Uh, that's, that's what I heard, you know, every day, uh, that last regular season game leading up to, to USD. They all continually talked about wanting to continue to play with this team as long as we can. And so that, that starts today with great practice. Um, every day this week we need to continue to get a little bit better. We've got to stay healthy. 
Um, and we're trying to battle that on every front that we can. Your, your snap load for tight ends that aren't Babbage, Stoffel, or Gindarf has been pretty light. Would you anticipate anybody we haven't seen a ton of moving to that role, maybe more Hunter in that role? So you, you could potentially see Hunter in that role a little bit. Um, you know, the, the name that you've, that you've left off, and, and understandably, is all the ogre snaps that we've taken this year. And so there is, there is that way to go through and, and replace some of those snaps with another extra offensive lineman if we feel like we need to. Uh, I know there's been a game or two that we've dressed Mason Miller in number 88 and then changed jersey later in the game to allow, allow him to play tackle. So that is another alternative right now. Yep. Yep. Christian, almost a game time decision with the injury he has. It, it, it really is going to come down to him and, and, and what's tolerable right now. And so uh, he's doing everything he can. He's in there as much as he can, uh, especially when you're talking about a young man who's in his last semester of school. Um, he has a pretty good handle on things. I mean, he's trying to maximize every minute that he can. He doesn't want to be on the sideline. That's He's too competitive. Um, he's worked way too hard. Um, he knows that's the most boring spot on the field, standing next to me on Saturday. Holmes and Sailors, they're two running backs. Um, wh what's the benefit, you know better than anybody, of having that one-two punch, that dynamic, that ability to, to attack somebody with two running backs? Well, it stresses, I think defensively it stresses you because you've got to be tackling all the time. Um, and you stay fresh in the backfield. So big physical backs that, that, that do a really good job getting downhill. Uh, I think they know exactly where they want to hit things. The other area that they've been able to attack, and I think if you go back to Kennesaw, uh, they used both those backs wheeling out of the backfield, some check downs, uh, finding other ways to get them the football as well. And, and they're not the only two. I mean, they got, uh, is it Will Hoosey, uh, one, of their, one of their wide receivers, big, tall, 6'4 kid, can stretch the field a little bit for you, and so you always get nervous. So, you know, having a, a, some X receivers, some outside receivers that I think are extremely talented, but also – um, two backs that can really go, uh, you're, you're going to have to come up with a good plan to defend the field. You feel like <clears throat> defensively, and maybe you know this better than anybody, when your offense runs so much that maybe they're a little bit more prepared for the run game as well on the defensive side and, and what you guys might bring because that's your bread and butter as well. There, there, there is always that uh, um, piece to it. Uh, you know, they're, they're comfortable defending under center run game. So uh, those are the challenges that will be presented by the opponent that we're playing this week is uh, there are some similarities probably philosophically on how we're doing things. Name there, Joe Schreiber, you yep. see? Yep. Um, jo Joe's a uh, – I had the opportunity to recruit Joe out of, out of the Minneapolis area. Great kid. Um, you know, uh, I think a couple years ago he left our program and uh, I think he, he uh, first went to Iowa Western. Uh, did a nice job down there and had opportunity to head to East Tennessee State. And, I, and he's and got got on at the right time, at the right place, and, and, and they're playing really well, and he's doing a great job. In here, is there any advantage? Does that help them at all? I'm not sure. I, he, he was here for two years. Both years he was here, he was on the scout team. So uh, I don't know. Give Blazek a call because they played Vanderbilt. I talked to AJ earlier the year when they played him, but I have not caught talk to him this week. I mean, you're talking about a game that's uh, you know, almost three months ago. So, you know, we're, we've, we watched it. We've seen it. There is a little bit of carryover because of um, Vanderbilt's a four-down team. Uh, we know they're going to run inside zone just like we are. So uh, it's good to watch. Uh, maybe some of our offensive guys have, but I have not talked to him. Damn, that's an SEC team. Why? Well, you know, I think you see, saw a team that was able to run the ball effectively and another team that was unable to run the ball. And I think it goes back to kind of some things that I've said in the past. If you're able to run the football or defensively you're unable to stop it, you're going you're gonna to die a slow death on a Saturday. You give up 300 yards passing, you still have a great chance to win. You know, a lot of those yards can happen between the 20s. Um, but when you can't stop the run, it, it gets extremely difficult, uh, just like you saw on Saturday, time of possession. All of a sudden, offensively, you start to hurry. You start to take shots. You maybe get away from what you thought your game plan was because there's just so few of possessions out there. Quincy, run package evolved since when did you first start thinking about that? And well, I, I think even when he was banged up a little bit, just he's too talented to stand on the sideline. Um, he, he does bring a, an extra – 
dynamic to the game. Um, I, I don't know how much we're going to expand on it or if we even will expand on it right now. Um, he's still the backup quarterback. Uh, there needs to be uh, a level of control there so we can keep him healthy, uh, you know, in case, knock on wood, something were to happen to Cam. But uh, it, it is, a, it, 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 from personal experience, I think defending two quarterbacks uh, during the course of a game can be uh, troubling or, or just sometimes can, can maybe water, force someone to water down their calls a little bit. Why, I guess, when you do have the Quincy package in, why is Cam split out wide? Why not throw another receiver out there? Is that a ID thing for the opposing? I think it, it just causes some stress. How are you going to treat? You going to treat him as a truly wildcat? You going to treat him as quarterback, or what? What does it do? What? How does it? How does it affect you? And so that's all we're trying to see is do people like we said when all of a sudden. If Quincy's lined up behind center, are you getting a, a more vanilla version of what they're doing defensively? But uh, we, there's plenty of snaps of him out there with two or three other receivers from the beginning of the year. So I would think it would be inaccurate if, if we said opponents aren't anticipating he can't throw. There's plenty of evidence out there that he can. The third, the third one, they blitzed the corner that was yep. on, on camp. Yep. And good to see, you know, and some teams will because, you know, do we really need to cover cover the corner? You know, what would be interesting is if Cam was at quarterback and Quincy was out there, you think they'd do the same thing? Hofstad got his first reception on Saturday. What have you seen out of Logan to get him more reps on the field? He's, he does a great job, just like Mason. Those guys are so locked in and great Great parts of our program. Uh, Logan has helped us on special teams. Um, being a fullback at NDSU is not a position for the faint at heart. Um, you know, fall camp, spring ball, uh, it's like you're running into a Mack truck every day. But uh, uh, he continues to work at it. Coach, Coach Roll has done an outstanding job with them. And, and, and once we got Hunter back, you have Logan, um, uh, you have uh, Luke Waters. I mean, to have three fullbacks, that can, and, and then, you know, Hunter Lipke, you know, Yankee can play a little bit of fullback. I mean, to have that, that depth in that room is pretty is special for us just because of the emphasis on the run game. It's been the up man. He's had the ball kicked to him like three or four times. Obviously, now he's probably going to get a little more reps at tight end. What have you seen throughout the year? To He's got good hands, obviously. He's been the up man. Yeah, there's the, the question of his route running and ability to catch the ball in space, it's point of attack run game. Just being – continue to get stronger. He's in his second year now, and Coach Kramer and his staff have done a great job with him. But confidence level, you know, you know can, he, can he set it in our run game when we want to run to the solid side or the tight end side? Um, and he's going to have to play more. Uh, we're going to find out. But that's why we practice the way we do. Uh, that's why we lean on those double reps in fall and spring. So guys like this or situations like this, regardless of who it is, we don't feel like we have to step backwards. We're going to keep moving forward. Anticipation having Will and just here back? Yes, they're, they're going to be back at today. I, I was hoping they'd be back on Saturday. So that was part of the reason why nothing was really said beforehand. I was still battling to try to get them, get them in there. What did you think of your, the way your linebacker group, obviously Cole being at Will all year, that you stick yep. him out at Sam? He, he, he did a really good job. Uh, you know, he's, he's taken a number of reps during the fall at Sam, just for instances like this. Um, and Coach Olson's done a great job of, of creating some unique combinations out there that allow us to, to, to be at our best. Uh, unfortunately, we're dealing with some injuries right now that um, we'll probably get through, but it'll be, too, it'll be in the spring, of course. Uh, but I thought Cole did a really good job, and I thought Coach Braun did a, uh, an exceptional job of putting him in situations to be successful. Uh, we tried, I know we did maybe two or three times, we put him in some man situations. Uh, and that could be nerve wracking with, you know, Southern Illinois, the caliber of receivers they had. But again, Cole being 6'4", 220 pounds almost, I mean, he gets hands on you. He, he's going to disrupt you and you're gonna, he's going to get connected and do a great job. He, he's a dang good football player. But, uh, and we're only scratching the surface right now. Be pleased now with your decision to hold James out as long as you did and really get this version of him back. Yeah, I thought this was his best game, or it emulated what we saw in the spring. Probably uh, that decisive decision making, uh, 
that burst, that explosiveness that you saw. There was one early in the game. I don't think he made the tackle, but you saw him. You saw him kind of sh shoot his pin and or pull his pin and, and run through on a cover two deal, and, and we had ended up getting a TFL on it. Someone else did, but I, I'm pleased with. You never want to hold kids out, and, and as a coach, you want to always be at your best. But um, there, there are times, I'll admit it, that listening to our medical staff is the way to go. Eighth year senior at linebacker. Have you ever seen? 31. Yeah, 31. Have you ever seen that before? Well, it's the only one in NCAA history, so no, I have not. Uh, how much value does that experience bring to, to that group? Uh, you know what? That's, that's interesting. I watched a TV copy today, and they said that most of their team was in the fifth grade when he started college. So, um, I, I, don't, I, I mean, it, it'd be unique uh, being 26 and, and hanging out with some 18-year-olds. I mean, uh, that, that's a big cavity right there as far as likes and dislikes. And, you know, um, but I sh I'm sure he does a great job. You look at his numbers. He's an excellent linebacker. Makes a ton of plays. Uh, is it uh, Folks? Yep. So, he, he stood out. Uh, last week, he had to make a ton of them against Kennesaw. And I thought both their inside backers, him and uh, Donovan Manuel, really played well. What the recruiting game is going right now, kind of whittling down to. Obviously, you guys have tons of stuff you have to get yep. prepared for to play yep. football, but uh, signing day's coming. Yep, it is. Uh, and it's a little over a week away. Week from Wednesday, we had seven kids on campus this weekend. Official visits was went really well. Um, and part of that is is... Ian Dino does a great job as our director of recruiting. Uh, our, our administration, our faculty want to be involved. They want to help us. Uh, and I think as long as we can continue to do a great job of emphasizing academics within our program, those people are willing to come and help. And uh, it was good. It was a good – all these kids were committed, so there wasn't the pressure. That's one of the things that um, this early signing date has probably taken away from you is the – the commit on this on the spot on my official visit. Most of these kids have, want to commit before their season now, um, but this was probably the sixth or seventh time a lot of our kids have been on campus. Uh, we'll have a extra large group this weekend. Um, again, trying to get all our committed kids on campus before signing day. You just because of some of the indecision or not necessarily knowing what your seniors were going to do. Could you potentially have a larger spring class? You know, you save a couple for the spring every a year, for but February. yeah, yeah, we potentially there. There could be some some other names uh, that pop up uh, in the in the traditional February date. Um, uh, Got to kind of see where where we're at. Like you said, um, roster management is a uh, daily thought process, a huge equation right now, trying to figure it all out. Going to the portal this year? Excuse me. Do you anticipate going to the portal this year? You're asking me to project what 18 to 22 year olds think? Uh, no way. I, I I hope not. I hope I hope we've created a, a good enough relationship with all the kids on our football team that they would think twice. Um, I would advocate. I, I personally, I'll, I'll advise them to make sure they know exactly what they're doing. I think there's some guys out there that, that make too quick of decisions and it doesn't end up working out for them. And then what do you do after that? Uh, I know there's been over 500 kids have entered the portal since last Monday. Um, I wish someone could do some research and find out how many of those guys are second time portal enters. Um, I think that would be interesting to find out. How important is it for you guys to get some of those numbers? For example, like, okay, the 500 kids in the portal, maybe only 140 of them get picked up but do you do you have those numbers that you we, can present to your guys we, we can get them uh you know we can get them from we can either do it the long way and go figure it out or we can try to access some some resources that we have to to get some accurate information i mean we can at some point the portal's got to start providing more information for us to um i mean just just to know that a kid's in the portal um I'd advocate that why don't we treat it like we do our high school kids, where if I go to the clearinghouse, I know what their grades are, I know where they live, I know where they're from, all that information. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's some guys that would second guess wanting to have their transcripts probably on the portal. You know, to your players potentially here on the portal, do you reference what's happened to you guys in the past, where some of your guys have gone and they've left your program, and where did they end up? Yep. Uh, I, you know what, Jeff, I don't have to reference that. Uh, those players have friends on the team. Uh, I think it's kind of passed along per conversation with our players. Um, I, I, don't, I, I seldom bring up guys that have left through the portal.
I don't think I ever have. I'm going to worry about the ones we have here. At the end of the Eastern Tennessee game, you said you watched the TV copy. Yep. That was, a what, 15 points in a minute and a half. That's, it was. That doesn't uh, happen often. Did a, did a great job. Uh, I believe had a couple penalties that helped him move the ball for that first touchdown. Uh, did a nice – quarterback did a great job of um, – you know, they hit a spacing route for the, the two-point conversion. Uh, tight end made a couple bit, real big catches in that drive. Uh, and then, you know, to, to, to beat, I mean, the, the, the odds of recovering the onside, uh, I, I think if you look at analytics, that, that is ex extremely, uh, the odds are against you, the percentages. But uh, um, I think the ball probably bounced off about four or five different people. I mean, uh, that's the way it, 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 it is an oblong football. It doesn't have a true bounce to it. So, uh, but they did a great job. And uh, uh, I, I got to believe that that probably, and, and you just look at their season, they've had a lot of close games. I'm sure they're a confident football team right now because of that. Um, you know, they beat Mercer by three. They've, they have some, they have an SEC win, of course. Uh, they've had some other close games that they've won by less than, less than uh, a touchdown. So, uh, this will be a, a confident, well-coached football team coming into the Fargo Dome. He's a quarterback. He's not the biggest guy around. No, he's, no he's... I, I think he does a really good job, uh, uh, moves well, uh, buys time. I think he knows where he wants to go with the football. Um, seems to, to operate the offense at a, at a high level. Uh, I mean, they're scoring 35 points a game and one of the top, top 20 offense in the country. You've mentioned it before. Using the word sim simplification, and I don't want you to get into, like, hand placement and stuff like that with the offensive line. But this looks like such a different group after Brookings. I mean, now for three 60-minute periods, what are these guys doing so much better than they were before? Why are they having the success that they're having? Because they No, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I th and again, I'm not trying to sound redundant, uh, Ross, but I, less is more right now with these guys. And um, we've really honed in on what they're good at. Rather than trying to add – We've subtracted a little bit, but that's allowed us to expand what we're doing. We may we may run a very similar run play or scheme, but do it out of ten different formations now is how we've tried to rather than having multiple schemes and minimal formations, if that makes sense to you. But I think we've just you know simplified things. Uh, again, the, you're talking about that, that's over that's almost six weeks ago now. There's been six weeks of practice too. Leading, you know, since then, and so uh, these kids work hard. Uh, you know, that's never in doubt. Uh, the energy and, and Coach Larson continues to do a great job with them, and uh, I think just putting our kids in, in the right situation um, and, and, and asking them to do things that they that their skill set will allow uh, has been a, has been effective for the last couple three weeks. Describe Jake Cava's role and how it's changed. Obviously, he dealt with a pretty serious knee injury. Couldn't play in the spring. Now that he's in the regular rotation on the defensive line and what he's turned the player he's turned into. Well, he, you know, he came to NDSU as a linebacker, as a walk-on, and uh, has changed physically to fit the role that he's in right now as a defensive end. Unbelievably smart football player. Uh, knows our scheme. Knows our system. And that's what initially allowed him to play for us. And now that you see him getting healthier and more healthy after that ACL tear, uh, he's a big part of what we're doing. And for us to, you know, count on guys who come here as walk-ons and now they're in the two deep, uh, that doesn't happen everywhere. Um, one, it's a you know, tremendous job by, by Coach Buda uh, taking a linebacker uh, and turning him into, you know, a defensive end. But that sack he had on Saturday, I thought that was at another level. I don't know if I've seen Jake move like that on the practice field and on the game field, but you know there was some explosiveness that tells me that he's really feeling well and playing at a confident level. And uh, I'm excited for him and his family. I know uh, they love everything about being a Bison. He's been a great, unbelievable teammate, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be rewarded in the future for it. I paid Braden Thomas being this good. He has been a machine. This I, I don't know if probably. I'm going to sound like a. Smart coach, if I say no, right? We just got him coached up that well. Um, we knew he was a really good football player coming to us from, from Minnesota State, Mankato. Uh, but he has continued to elevate his game over the course of, uh, of two years now. And each week, it seems like he just finds way to continue to make plays. And um, I think you're seeing the, the elbow. I know he's wearing the, the big brace, but he seems to be playing very, very strong again. He's throwing offensive linemen around. I mean, he is a physical 
force on our defensive line. And, and Coach Buda does a great job getting those guys ready. Um, you know, I don't think let's never take away the coaching part of it. When you, when you see 10 or 11 defensive linemen playing, you know that all, all of them are getting coached up pretty well if, if we can be that deep and have that many young guys playing for us too up there. Monte Cox, obviously, but you had to feel pretty good about the job the corners did. Can you yep. talk about, you know, Jaden and Destin and Courtney and Marquise and, and uh, the job that Cody is doing because there's been a lot of Bison teams that these are the two corners. And when you go nickel, these are the three corners, and yep. that's it. And oh, these guys keep. I've been part of those teams before where, you know, I, I can remember a 2015 uh, game at Montana where we were missing C.J. Smith, and it was nerve-wracking, you know, because all of a sudden it was Jordan was coming first time starting, and then it was – you know, what, what are we going to do? Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, for us to have four deep, you know, at, at a position that has to play a number of high reps and, and lengthy reps, they're going to play some long snaps, meaning from the snap of the ball to the end, it's four or five seconds, you know, six seconds maybe a play. Um, you know, I, I think he's done a great job of creating depth. Jaden Price continues. You can see confidence being – uh, developed every week in just the plays he's making, but also in the return game. I think Destin Talbert's playing his best football that he's played while he's here, and so excited to know that he's coming back to continue to, 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 to build on that. Uh, our, our young guy, Courtney Eubanks, he's a competitor. He, he, you tell him that he's only a freshman, he takes that as a, as a, as a jab, and I'm a, I'll, I'll show you what a freshman's going to play like or a young guy. And then, you know, the, actually today at our, at our team meeting, Marquis Siegel's going to be our player of the game at corner. You know, he came in the last couple, of, the last series, made about four plays in a row down in the red zone. Talk about being a competitive kid. He's on every special team. He's kind of the leader of our punt D as far as the communication piece goes. So, uh, you know, Cody's done a, a, an unbelievable job, and those guys have allowed themselves to get coached up really well. All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you.